While I am no stranger to building cloud gaming servers, my server rack is starting to get just a little bit crowded. So today I'm going to try to cram eight gaming PCs worth of hardware into this 1U box, because putting it all into a 4U box was just too easy. Hey, Jeffrey, I'm going to be taking off for the day. Do you need anything else? Oh. Hey, Rhett, before you go, I need you to get on and order that craftcomputing.store domain for me. Absolutely. I'll hop on to Porkbun. They got everything we need. You're not going to forget like last time, are you? Hey, man. What you working on? Oh, hey, bro. I was just putting the finishing touches on my new logo for my blog, Craft Computing. Hey, uh, could you buy that domain for me, man? Yeah, man. Totally will. But, uh, we're going to be late for that board meeting. Oh, right. I, I did not realize what time it was, my man. Let's hit that first. Don't let your dream project go up in smoke because you didn't buy the domain. Visit Porkbun today. They carry over 500 domain extensions from AI to XYZ and your favorite niche TLDs like .quest and .computer. The best part is their domains are priced to sell. Check out this domain I picked up for just $2.55. Visit Porkbun.com to get your website started today. That's Porkbun.com and again, thanks to Porkbun for sponsoring today's video. You should grow your hair back out. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. And yeah, I'm up to my old tricks again, although the server in this case will be fairly familiar. This is the Elemental 1U GPU server that I picked up just a couple of months ago in hopes of installing a bunch of AMD Radeon Instinct cards into. But as you might have found out, that project didn't exactly go as planned. But rather than let the hardware go to waste or just resell it, I figured I might as well fill it with NVIDIA cards and see if we can solve a couple of the problems that I've had with cloud gaming servers in the past, namely in the storage bandwidth department. So yes, today we will be installing two Tesla M40 12 gigabyte cards, as well as a Tesla M60 16 gigabyte dual GPU card. But we are also gonna load this thing out with solid state storage, starting with a pair of 1.92 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf Enterprise SSDs. This will be responsible for loading Proxmox as well as the operating system disks for all of my virtual machines. But if you've been following the series long enough, you know that game storage has been a major issue when trying to run 8 or 12 VMs at the same time. So today we are finally throwing some NVMe at the problem. In my hand is a pair of Western Digital Black 2TB NVMe Gen 4x4 drives that we'll be installing into the server in hopes of getting game load times to a somewhat reasonable level. And thanks to Micro Center for sending these over to me. Now, we're not gonna be able to take full advantage of the 8,000 megabyte per second read speeds of these Gen 4x4 drives, mainly because I only have PCI Express 3.0 in this server. However, we will still be dealing with lower latency NAND flash as well as better drive controllers inside of here, so we should still see a marked difference. Plus, we're gonna run these in a ZFS RAID 1 anyway, and I'm hoping that makes all the difference. Now, the Elemental server does not have standard M.2 NVMe slots, so we're gonna have to use one of the PCI Express slots to plug our drives in. I picked up this card right here, which is actually a four slot M.2 adapter to go to a single 16X slot. Now, I would have filled all four drive slots in this adapter, but the only slot available in the rear of the server is an X8, so we can only use two drives instead of all four. Maybe in a future video, I'll put four drives onto this card and see if we can truly eliminate our bottlenecks. As for the rest of the hardware that we'll be using today, here's a quick refresher. This is an Elemental 1U server that I picked up off eBay for $279. Inside is a Supermicro 1028TR motherboard with dual 2011 V3 sockets. I've got a pair of Intel Xeon 2898 V3 CPUs, which are 16 core and 32 thread each, running at 3.6 gigahertz max turbo. Alongside those is 256 gigabytes of DDR4 ECC registered memory running at 2133 mega transfers per second. And finally, to keep everything fed with power, we have a pair of 1100 watt platinum rated power supplies. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get this thing together and get to some testing. Thank you. 
With the server fired up, I did quite a bit of work off camera on the software side of things to get it up and rolling. I installed Proxmox 7.1.7 .7 onto the pair of SATA SSDs, enabled IOMMU in both the BIOS and the OS, and set up the NVIDIA vGPU unlock package using the Rust script. Links to my video tutorial, as well as written documentation and sources are all available down in the video description. So that's the hypervisor sorted, and next I moved on to the NVMe storage. For that, I went ahead and set up a TrueNAS virtual machine and passed through the pair of Western Digital Black 2TB NVMe drives. While I probably could have set up the ZFS RAID 1 pool in a standalone array in Proxmox, I prefer the ease of setting up the iSCSI shares inside TrueNAS. If you're interested in how I set up the iSCSI disks, I have a link to that video down in the video description as well. Essentially, each virtual gaming machine I plan on running gets its own ZVol on the NVMe pool. And in this case, I made them all one terabyte in size. Now you might ask how I plan on having eight one terabyte ZVol allocations with only two terabyte of storage actually usable on the pool. Well, as the only things that are going to be installed on these drives are games, I enabled deduplication for the entire pool, which will detect identical storage blocks on the array and only keep a single copy with differential data for other instances. Now, this doesn't mean that every virtual machine will have all the same games installed and all the same data, even though they're all connected to the same ZFS pool. Each VM will have a one terabyte disk attached through iSCSI, and each VM will need to install a copy of the games that they want. However, if a second VM installs the same game, the drive pool will only need to keep a single copy of that data, with differential data for any changes made to each ZVol. Like other complicated installs from earlier in this video, I also have an entire video on deduplication inside TrueNAS. Link is in the usual place. And finally, we get to the virtual gaming machines themselves. Between the three GPUs I have in the server, I'm wanting to run eight gaming virtual machines, and I've set them all up with six virtual CPU cores, 16 gigabytes of memory, and an 80 gigabyte boot drive on the SATA SSD pool. Now, technically speaking, I actually have four GPUs in this server. The two Tesla M40s with 12 gigabytes of video memory each, and the Tesla M60 is actually a dual GPU card, and each GPU shows up individually with eight gigabytes of video memory. I'll be splitting each GPU into two partitions and dedicating each partition to a single VM. That means a VM assigned to a Tesla M40 will have six gigabytes of VRAM, and a VM with an M60 partition will have four gigs. Unlike GPU memory, GPU compute power isn't a hard partition and is actually dynamically shared with the attached virtual machines. As each GPU is serving two VMs, if one machine is sitting idle, the other can take full advantage of the attached GPU. That's 3072 CUDA cores and 250 watts of TDP for each of the Tesla M40s, and 2048 CUDA cores and 150 watts TDP for the Tesla M60s. Load is automatically balanced between the GPUs when multiple virtual machines are accessing compute power. But the focus of today's video is going to be on the storage solution, and can I actually run eight gaming machines off of just two NVMe drives? I have no idea, so let's give that a shot now. All right, jumping on over into the Proxmox server, you can see all of my Windows VMs are already up and running. Now in total, we are using 236 gigabytes of the 256 gigabytes that I installed in this server. We're also allocating essentially up to about 60 of the 64 threads, although the threads will dynamically shift as far as power requirements go. But each of these eight virtual machines is set up with 16 gigabytes of memory, six CPU cores, that is essentially six threads, and a vGPU instance. We've also gone ahead and installed the vert.io network driver so we can get greater than 10 gigabit speed locally inside of this server. Moving down to the TrueNAS server, I've gone ahead and set that up with 32 gigabytes of memory and 12 virtual cores. We've also passed through the Western Digital Black two terabyte drives with PCI Express pass-through. Jumping on into that TrueNAS server and clicking on storage, you can see I've already set up the two drives into a RAID Z1 and then created eight individual ZVols for each of my VMs. Now each of these ZVols is attached to a virtual machine through iSCSI. And again, the tutorial for linking a games library with iSCSI is down in the description. I've gone ahead and installed Crisis onto seven out of the eight drives that you can see here. And the install is about 7.59 gigabytes. Now, some simple math says that 7.59 gigabytes times seven instances of Crisis installed gives us right around 54 gigabytes of used space, and that is what TrueNAS is reporting. However, that's not entirely accurate. 
Now, there's no GUI interface that will tell you how well deduplication is working or how effective it is, but we can jump into the system shell and get an idea. So I'm gonna type in zpool list, and we'll see our elemental games pool. And over here on the far side, you can see the dedupe amount as well as the actual allocated space. So right now we are using only 11 gigabytes, not 54 gigabytes, and deduplication is 5.19x accurate. That is, it is actually taking five times less space than TrueNAS is actually reporting. So it's not completely linear or entirely perfect, but installing eight instances of Crisis onto eight different Zvols does not give us eight different copies of Crisis. What we're left with is slightly over double the amount of usable space that we would normally be taking up by a single install. But let's go ahead and take a look at those virtual machines in action. And for that, I'm going to use Moonlight connected to a Sunshine service that I've installed on all of these virtual machines. So let's start with machine number one. So we'll start with machine one and we'll just put that instance right up there. And really quickly, I'll try to get the rest of them loaded up. So there are the eight virtual machines pulled up inside of Moonlight. And if I pull up my SSH session, you can see we've got eight virtual GPUs assigned to those eight VMs. Now, it might be a little bit difficult to read, so I will have Rhett zoom in in post, but here are the actual vGPU instances themselves. As you can see, we've got four six gigabyte instances and four four gigabyte instances, each of those attached to the GPUs listed up here. So on top of the 235 gigabytes of system memory that we've assigned in this machine, we're also using 40 gigabytes of video memory as well. Now, as I mentioned, I installed Crisis on seven out of the eight machines already, and I'm gonna go ahead and get machine number eight set up right now. So let's go ahead and bring that one on full screen, and we'll click on the Crisis installer. Checking out the drives attached to this VM, again, we have our 80 gigabyte boot volume, as well as the one terabyte ZVOL attached through iSCSI. And if I open that up, you can see there's nothing installed here, despite Crisis being installed on the other seven VMs on this same zpool but we'll go ahead and get Crisis installed right now. So E colon backslash. Yes, I agree to the EULA and install. All right, so there is Crisis installed. And again, we've added right around 7.6 gigabytes or in Windows terms, 8.1 gigabytes of space to that ZVOL. But let's go ahead and jump on back over to TrueNAS and let's see what was actually added. So if I go down into storage, you can see that that number has risen to almost 61 or 62 gigabytes. But if we go into the shell again, zpool list, uh, we are now using 1.1 gigabytes. So that additional install of Crisis only took 100 additional megabytes out of our zpool. Pretty cool stuff. But now for the moment I've all been waiting for, can I actually load all eight instances at the same time? Now I know Crisis is not the most demanding title as far as loading assets into memory, but loading eight simultaneous random seek reads off of an NVMe, that's gonna be something to watch. So I'm gonna try to click on these all as quickly as possible. All right, here we go. All right, there's all eight. All right, so we have all eight instances set up at 1080p high settings, and I've already got some pretty interesting numbers, not necessarily from the storage. It actually didn't take much at all to load the games just to the main menu. We'll check on that in just a minute. But as far as the resources required to do what you see right here. So let me go ahead and open Proxmox back up right now. We'll go to the summary screen. As you can see, just to load the crisis menu and stay on the menu screen, we're using about 40 to 41% of our overall CPU power. These are dual 135 watt 16 core CPUs. We're using 40% of our available power. Uh, going down to network usage, you can see the load is only about 15 megabit per second right now. It's, it's hardly anything. And that's just to keep these assets loaded. So this was the game loading and sitting here on the menu screen. 
The GPUs are also pretty interesting because they are doing the stream rendering as well as trying to render Crisis, which even on the menu is a 3D rendering. Uh, as you can see, we're sitting right about 75 to 85% utilization on every single card uh, and right around 100 watts uh, each. Although interestingly enough, the second Tesla M40 is using about 10 watts more than the first Tesla M40. But temperatures so far are green across the board. We're seeing only 45 degrees Celsius on both of the Teslas and right around 55 to 60 degrees on the Tesla M60s. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing started. Single player, new game, start. So the first four VMs are using the Tesla M40s. The second four VMs are using the Tesla M60s. All right, so we have every single VM loading the game right now. That's actually not a terrible wait time. Uh, it's slightly longer than I would expect with an SSD, but as you can see, they're coming up pretty quick. Let's see how uh, closely these sync up. Hold on, gotta see if I can get to the jump. A couple of them are already free falling. All right, there we go. Starting to hit 100% utilization on the GPUs, and there we go. We've hit 100% on all of them, it looks like. Uh, so far, so good. And as you can see, these are all fully playable at 60 frames per second. I can click on any one of them and take control. That's too much fun. <laughs> Let's at least get over to the beach with one of these guys. I'm controlling the uh, top center one right now. I don't know, if I stay in the water, is he gonna die? I, I've never tried staying in the water in Crisis before. <laughs> but right now I have like six of them that want to drown. And actually our GPUs have settled down a little bit, sitting right around 78% to 85%, somewhere right in there. Uh, I do have the frame rate limited in all of these instances to 60 FPS, so not reaching 100% is actually not that bad of a thing, uh, because we're only going to stream 60 FPS anyway, so why waste CPU cycles and power and heat and wear and tear on your system if you're not going to be able to take advantage of it? Now, Moonlight can stream up to 120 FPS and even beyond with some unsupported modes, but, oops, <laughs> one of my guys died. Apparently you can drown if you stay in the water too long. But so far, I mean, again, this is very early results. Um, I'm not seeing any stuttering that I can't just attribute to network. If I grab any of these VMs, you can see just how incredibly smooth they are. There's no stuttering, there's no hiccups. That's all pretty incredible. And what's more is, even with all of them loading at the exact same time, it wasn't really noticeable versus a dedicated VM with a standalone SSD. So far, I'm gonna call the NVMe drives a win. Although, I'm gonna need to figure out how to do actual load testing or performance testing in real time on these machines so I can actually get some highs and lows without just synthetic testing because I don't think synthetic testing is going to tell me actually what I need to know here. But as far as the answer, can this run crisis? Um, what's the plural of crisis? Crisis? Crises? Well, but that's crisis is in like the the verb. What, you know, there's a crisis happening. Or noun, I guess it would be. Well, crises is like multiple crises. Okay, but like, but does that apply to the proper noun of crisis, which is C-R-Y-S-I-S? Maybe it's like, uh, you know, like moose and moose. I buy that. Yeah. Yes, Virginia, you can run eight crises. Now, there's a couple more interesting notes about this GPU server. First and foremost are the fans that are used to keep all of this cool. If you notice, the GPUs and the CPUs don't have fans. This is a 100% passively cooled server as far as the heat sinks go. But that's not to say there aren't fans inside the server. Each of those fans is a little 40 millimeter delta fan. And I did some quick math and running at 100%, those fans will draw 18 watts 
each, which means times 10 fans in the server, we're using up to about 180 watts just with the fans. That's a GTX 1070 running at a pretty good tilt. We're using it to cool cards that are running Crisis. Let's take their guns, and I think we'll call this a day and call this project overall success, even though I wound up not using the AMD Instinct cards I wanted to in the first place. Anyway, if you're interested in buying any of this equipment that I use in the video today, I bought all of it off eBay or at microcenter.com. Micro Center is the place where you can get all of your PC parts under one roof, or in my case, if you don't live by one, order online at microcenter.com. For a limited time, new customers can receive $25 off the purchase of any Intel or AMD CPU. New customers only, and make sure to get your coupon code down in the video description. And a huge shout out to Micro Center for sending over some of the parts in today's build. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button or subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing for daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. It's an empty glass. Beer for today is from one of my Patreon mods, Claw over in Norway. This is the Nognae Imperial Stout Strong Dark Ale, clocking in at 9%. And yes, this was shipped all the way from Norway. I cram the rest of it in this glass, or do I share the last two ounces of threat? It's the constant battle of morality that I have. You're welcome. Don't let me tell you he's a bad boss, guys. Makes all the abuse kind of worth it, doesn't it? <laughs> it's way more mild for how thick and chewy it is. Uh, and there's, it's a stout, but like a lot of the beers that I've gotten from Norway, especially the, the bigger, more robust ones, the flavors are completely unusual for what I normally get, so. This one's gonna take a little bit of uh, a little bit of work before I can suss everything out of it. Let's do this first. So, like I mentioned, this is definitely an interesting stout, uh, and it's not that it's bad. It's just completely different than most other stouts that I would get here. Um, it's thick, it's chewy, but there's not really a lot of coffee. There's not a lot of roast. There's not chocolate. I would say the most predominant flavor is almost like a fig um, or hazelnut or something like that. Uh, it's a little bit more on the nutty side and the malt is, gosh, how do I explain the malt in this? <laughs> it's well-rounded, but with flavors you're not going to expect out of an imperial stout. Okay, actually there is a little bit of chocolate. There's a little bit of chocolate. They're right on the very back end. And that's really what lingers. Good beer, well-rounded, but uh, something a little bit unpredictable.